Hello and welcome to Living Life. May you be blessed in your time in God's Word today. Today is July 24th and we're starting Numbers chapter 33. You know, when I look back on, on my college days and uh, some of the journals that I made, uh, the quiet time journals and devotionals that I wrote down, you know, uh, I, I get so amazed at how much uh, growth that God has brought upon my life and some of the sins that I struggled with in college are, uh, I was able to by God's grace, overcome them, and, and how He has been so faithful, and how faithless and unfaithful I've been, and yet, and yet how faithful God has been all these years. And looking at uh, chapter 33 of Numbers, it's kind of like looking back at your spiritual journal. Uh, Israelites have gone through some rough and turbulent times in their, uh, in their life, but through it all, God has remained faithful. So our passage is uh, quite long, but also it's very meaningful in every way. Let's, uh, let's dive into our passage today as we reflect on the faithfulness of God. Numbers chapter 33 verses 1 through 37. Here are the stages in the journey of the Israelites when they came out of Egypt by division under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. At the Lord's command, Moses recorded the stages in their journey. This is their journey by stages. The Israelites set out from Ramses on the 15th day of the first month, the day after the Passover. They marched out boldly in full view of all the Egyptians, who were burying all their firstborn, whom the Lord had struck down among them. For the Lord had brought judgment on their gods. The Israelites left Ramses and camped at Sukkoth. They left Sukkoth and camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. They left Etham, turned back to Pi Hiroth to the east of Baal Zephon, and camped near Migdal. They left Pi Hiroth and passed through the sea into the desert, and when they had traveled for three days in the desert of Etham, they camped at Mara. They left Mara and went to Elim where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees, and they camped there. They left Elim and camped by the Red Sea. They left the Red Sea and camped in the desert of Sin. They left the desert of Sin and camped at Dafka. They left Dafka and camped at Alush. They left Alush and camped at Rephidim, where there was no water for the people to drink. They left Rephidim and camped in the desert of Sinai. They left the desert of Sinai and camped at Kibroth Hatava. They left Kibroth Hatava and camped at Hazaroth. They left Hazaroth and camped at Rithma. They left Rithma and camped at Ramon Perez. They left Ramon Perez and camped at Libna. They left Libna and camped at Risa. They left Risa and camped at Kahelatha. They left Kahelatha and camped at Mount Shefer. They left Mount Shefer and camped at Harada. They left Harada and camped at Makala. They left Makalath and camped at Tahath. They left Tahath and camped at Tera. They left Tera and camped at Mithka. They left Mithka and camped at Hashmana. They left Hashmana and camped at Mazaroth. They left Mazaroth and camped at Bene Jakan. They left Bnei Jakan and camped at Hor Hagadgad. They left Hor Hagadgad and camped at Jotbatha. They left Jotbatha and camped at Abrana. They left Abrana and camped at Ezion Geber. They left Ezion Geber and camped at Kadesh in the desert of Zin. They left Kadesh and camped at Mount Hor on the border of Edom. This passage outlines 41 stations uh, that the you know, Israelites traveled through in their 40 years of wandering uh, through the desert. So it's quite long, it's wordy, but also it's very meaningful because in verse 1, uh, they calls it, here are the stages in the journey of Israelites. And in verse 2, if you look down at verse 2, at the Lord's command, Moses recorded the stages in their journey. Notice those words uh, that are repeated, stages, stages. I love that word stages because it doesn't seem like a stage at all. You know, it seems like pointless and meaningless uh, position that 
Israel just happened to wander about in their life and wandering through the desert. Uh, it seems like, you know, there's no seeming purpose or point other than just a meaningless stop on the way to the promised land. And yet, uh, God calls it, or the Bible calls it, stages, stages on the journey uh, to the promised land. Every stop on the way to the promised land is packed with meaning because, you know, whether they knew it or not, God was molding them and God was shaping them uh, to trust in God alone and to uh, really rely on the faithfulness of God himself. So each recorded stage is supposed to bring a remembrance uh, to the memory of the Israelites as they think about how unfaithful they are and how grumbling they're complaining all the way. And yet God was so faithful the whole time. So for example, Red Sea in verse 10, uh, Desert of Sin in verse 12. Uh, in verse 8, talks about Mara uh, or bitter. Uh, Rephidim uh, mentioned in verse, um, uh, verse 14. You know, they, these places are filled with stories, background stories of rebellion, how Israelites continue to grumble and just complain against God, and yet God was so faithful. Uh, he provided for them manna. He gave them water, and He sustained them. He rescued them from each Egyptians. You know, God was always broke through with faithfulness over and over in time and time, again and again. So in recording the 40-year wandering through the desert, uh, you know, Israelites, what they're doing is they're taking a very long view of life. Uh, it's not an instant gratification. Uh, it's not a short view of life. We live in a society where everything's about instant gratification. We, by our fingertips, by our smartphones, we order and we, we want things right away. We want action. We want changes happen right away at the instant. Uh, we're very accustomed to uh, instant gratification, and yet... Um, Eugene Peterson, this pastor, wrote a book called A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. A Long Obedience in the Same uh, Direction. And in that book, he argues that Christian life is not, a, it's, it's not like a tourism. It's not, like, it's not to be lived just for the instant, just for the moment, but with a very long view of life uh, in perspective. We're not tourists, but we're uh, pilgrims, we're disciples. So tourists, think about what tourists do. They, they go and they take pictures, they buy souvenir, and they're like, okay, on to the next one. Especially Korean tourists, uh, they're always taking pictures and then you know, pit stop and then just go to the next stop to make sure they were there. Uh, they're not really taking in the whole, the whole journey. Whereas the pilgrim, pilgrim is they're spending their whole lives in a movement towards some place, and that place for us is God. We're, we're spending our whole life moving towards God uh, through Jesus Christ alone. This is what he had to say. I quote, The Christian life is not a quiet escape to a garden where we can walk and talk uninterruptedly with our Lord, not a fantasy trip to a heavenly city where we can compare our blue ribbons and gold medals with those of others who have made it to the winner's circle. The life of faith is a daily exploration of the constant and countless ways in which God's grace and love are experienced, end quote. So truth is, you might be feeling like Israelites right now in your place of life right now. You might be feeling like, where am I? Where am I going? You know, this seems pointless. This seems meaningless. Does this place in my life right now, does what I'm doing right now, does it have any meaning? Does it have any purpose? Uh, you might feel like you're not going anywhere in your life. And the truth is, God is taking you by your hand right now from one stage of life to the next. Uh, even though it might seem meaningless, and each stage, each stage of life, He is humbling you, He is shaping you, He is molding you, breaking you into the image of His Son. So are you exploring, like what Eugene Peterson said, are you expo exploring the constant and countless grace countless ways in which God's grace have met you along the road. You know, today are you recounting His faithfulness upon your life? So God's calling for us is to trust wherever you are in your life and to celebrate His faithfulness.
I'd like to close with a story from a book, Princess and the Goblin, by George MacDonald. Uh, it's a little eight-year-old princess uh, who's in danger for her life uh, because of the attack of the goblins. And the grandmother, the, uh, the very old grandmother of the princess, gives her a ring with invisible thread on the ring. And she said, you know, it might not make sense to you, but just follow the thread. Wherever the thread leads, it will lead you to uh, safe rescue. So the princess, you know, as she's fleeing the goblins, she's following the thread, and it doesn't make any sense. It's leading her into a mountain, into a very narrow passage, and she's trying to find her way. But she keeps just following the thread, finally ends up uh, in the heap of just, you know, rocks. You know, these rocks are all uh, placed there, and then she's wailing and she's crying because she feels like this is a dead end and this is nowhere in life. And then she finds out that the thread actually goes into the stones. So she removes these stones one by one. And then later on, she finds out that uh, in, in under all these stones that uh, her friend is actually captured inside that she was able to rescue her friend. So her friend and the princess, they're trying to make a rescue out. And every time it's, it's a maze and it, they're just following the thread, but it, it seems like it's leading them uh, against their instinct. It, 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 seems, it seems like they're leading them like in the wrong way. Uh, but then she says, you know, I know that, but this is the way my thread goes and I must follow it. So, you know, even though this thread goes against her natural instincts, she keeps following the thread and finally they're uh, led to safety by the wisdom of the grandmother. And so the, the challenge for you, the challenge for me is this. Will you follow the thread today? Even though you cannot see it, even though it goes against your instinct, will you stay faithful and trusting in God and follow the thread and receive God's training for you in this stage of life? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for what you are doing, even though we don't see it clearly. And we want to trust in you that you are molding us and working in us right now. So give us that faith and increase our faith and help us to trust in you and follow the thread. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This program is 시청자 여러분의 소중한 후원으로 제작됩니다.